Welcome to a new In The Mail, the series that will touch both your passion for electronics and your bank account at the same time. This will be a great year, hopefully. Uh, I'll make sure to do my part and provide you with the best mailbag videos on YouTube. We're going to start with this utility knife. It's the Xiaomi type knife that I showed in a previous mailbag, uh, but I liked it so much that I got another one. I'll keep one in my laptop backpack for general stuff like opening packages, envelopes, and one at my workbench for general purpose stuff. The body on this knife is aluminum and the build quality is really nice. They feel perfect in the hand, the perfect weight, and you can get them with a set of uh, super sharp replacement blades and they're pretty cheap to buy as a set with everything considered. So if you haven't already got one of these, I highly recommend you get one. You will find the links in the description below the video. Next up, I got myself a T12 or T15 soldering tip. Uh, the two numbers are dependent on the market it's sold on, but uh, it's basically the same stuff. This is my go-to soldering tool, the one I use daily. It's a T12 STN32 based soldering station and I've been using it for the past couple of years if not more with both genuine and fake tips from AliExpress and the thing is not one of them has failed so far. But it's not what you would expect, not the kind of failure that you would expect. So this is the tip that I have used since I originally got this station. It's the tip that uh, I use more often. It's a clone of the Hakko T12KU tip. So it's this small knife type tip. Uh, and I find this works best for my workflow. And uh, this has been the workhorse of my soldering station. I rarely switch to a uh, different soldering tip. Now, as you can see, the tip on this one is still in a pretty good shape, still solders fine, takes solder with no issue, even after many hours of usage, uh, but it failed in a different spot. The tip is uh, somehow glued and uh, sealed towards the uh, bottom of the uh, assembly where the contacts are and it's somehow separated at this spot as you can see right now I can spin the ceramic part inside the metal part and you're not supposed to be able to do that and this happened about a month ago I don't remember exactly how I was uh, switching tips and I probably inserted uh, this too a bit too hard I, I may have also spinned it inside the handle if it uh, wasn't making a good contact the first go I don't remember exactly but uh, what happened is that the tip still works but because of this issue where the contacts spin inside the tip you can see it already started melting in here something happened and uh, sometimes uh, it breaks the connection so I decided to replace it I bought a uh, similar uh, no-name one which should hopefully last me another couple of years. I also must admit that uh, since I got the JBC clone, I'm also uh, sometimes uh, using this one for various small soldering jobs. I really like the form factor on this one, but I'll probably do a separate video with my impressions after using it for a while. I still need to purchase a few uh, other types of tips and uh, I'm gonna do a separate video on that. And if you're doing some soldering, you're probably working on some PCBs. So it's time to introduce the sponsor of this video, PCBWay.com. They offer professional PCBs manufactured at affordable pricing with fast turnaround times. They also offer complete turnkey solutions where they handle everything from sourcing the parts to assembling and testing your boards before shipping so you can get them fully assembled. Check out their website link below and order your PCBs. Next up, let's continue with some wiring uh, that I got recently. These are all JST-SH connectors, which means uh, they are 1.0 millimeter pitch. And I plan to standardize on these for uh, small projects that I will be building next. Uh, that means using this connector for programming ESP32 boards, for example. And I'm also working on a custom programmer board that will complete the link and feature the same connection. And these would be pretty difficult to crimp on your own. You would need a very good and precise crimping tool to be able to do these small crimps and it would probably take you too long to do them. But luckily you can find pre-crimped wires. You can find housings in any configuration so you can 
build your own cables uh, pretty easily these days or you can buy these ready-made ones like I did. Next I got a new set of silicon wires but these are AWG 30 uh, the previous ones that I had were AWG 28 and I wanted something a bit thinner. Uh, there are five colors in here and there should be 50 meters each, which is quite a lot. Uh, these should last me a while. As you can see, I haven't even uh, reached the half of these pools on the 28 AWG. Even at uh, 30 AWG, uh, these are still about 1.2 millimeters thick. Uh, with the uh, ins with the silicon insulation, so uh, they're thinner, but uh, not very thin. So keep that in mind when ordering. If you want something thinner, you'll probably want to go for a uh, different insulation like Teflon or something similar. And you're probably wondering how many strands there are in each of these wires. And if we look under a uh, magnification, I count 11 strands of wire. It's nice to have these around for various projects for internal wiring. Silicon is not a must for most of these hobby projects, but it sure is nice to work with. The next item is a uh, male and female part for the VW 20 pin gateway module and uh, the associated pins for each one of these connectors. If you've watched Voldog 342, you noticed I'm uh, working on a project where I want to hack the CAN bus network on a VW car. I'm doing some reverse engineering and at some point uh, I plan to place my own device on the car's bus to inject, inject some of my own data. And I highly recommend you watch that video if you are into this kind of uh, stuff. And just in case, I might have to do some uh, debugging or reverse engineering by inserting my device um, at the gateway connection where all of the different CAN bus networks are joined. Uh, I got this uh, set of connectors so I could build this like man in the middle type of adapter where I could split or tap uh, whichever bus I'm interested in and still have them pass through to the gateway. Uh, I would happily get these used from like a car junkyard instead of buying from AliExpress, but unfortunately they're not very friendly around here uh, when the only thing you want is uh, small stuff like connectors. Hence, I need to buy them from uh, AliExpress. And to go with uh, these uh, connectors, uh, I got myself some 24 AWG wires that I will twist together myself to form the uh, required twisted pair for a CAN bus network. Uh, the original wire looms are 22 AWG on the car, but I really don't need to go that thick for these short distances and the hobby nature of the project. You can also find ready-made twisted pairs in 22 AWG size. I think they're the genuine stuff, but they're quite a bit more expensive and uh, it wasn't worth it for me, especially since in that case, I wouldn't be able to use them for other purposes given their uh, twisted pair nature. However, if I would be replacing or adding into the car's network, I would consider that of higher importance and I would go for the uh, correct genuine wiring in that case just to keep the impedance of the line at the expected value of 120 ohms. For my hobby projects, however, these uh, 24 AWG wires uh, and the uh, DIY method of twisting them will work just fine. These hooks are great for hanging stuff on the side of a metal shelf like I'm using for storing various plastic bins. Uh, I usually hang stuff like multimeters that come with a carry case, stuff that I will occasionally need to use but not too often. And if you have a proper workshop with a tool hanger on the wall, you can probably use them for that purpose as well. I'll try to include some overlay pictures uh, as to how I'm using these. Uh, my secondary purpose would probably be somewhere in the kitchen for hanging various stuff these are cheap, convenient to use, so it's well worth buying a set of these. These are magnets and they're designed for uh, like a necklace or bracelet type configuration because they have these tiny holes uh, through which you can pass some uh, wires and attach stuff, but I'm not into building those. Instead, I figured these would uh, work okay for posting various stuff on metallic surfaces and uh, sticking it with a, um, a very small magnet like these, like on a fridge door, for example. Or if you are into building wearables, you could probably use them for a few different uh, scenarios and make various connections uh, with these. Next up, I have a couple of uh, different types of switches. 
These ones with the blue shaft are the motherboard type switches that we used to have in every computer case for the power on and reset switch and these are uh, double pole double throw switches with a self latching mechanism. They're about 7x7mm 7 7 wide and the uh, DC current uh, rating is probably pretty low. I wouldn't use these for anything more than 500 milliamps. Um, I have recently used a bunch of them in the VW cluster project. Uh, I wanted to simulate various analog switches for sensors that are inputs to the cluster. So I assembled a bunch of these on a uh, test board. I'll try to include an overlay image of that so you can get a sense of what I'm talking about. But this is the reason why I need a refill. I'll probably use uh, a few more of these for that project. The second type of switch that I have here is an uh, illuminated tactile switch and these uh, feature a momentary switch like uh, most tactile switches and a built-in LED as well as uh, an accessory which is this keycap that goes over the tactile switch. The nice thing is that these come in a uh, surface mount package this is what I was looking for and you can order them with a bunch of different color LEDs as well as 170 different styles of keycaps with every possible icon you can imagine. So it would be pretty easy to find something suitable for the function you plan for that switch. And here is how the LED looks like when it's shining through the keycap. It looks pretty nice, it's, it's hard to capture on video but it looks uh, nicer in real life. I really like these and they should come in handy for a variety of projects. My next item is a small omnidirectional MEMS microphone with digital interface. It's mounted on a small breakout board and the main feature of this model is the I2S digital interface which would allow easy interfacing of this microphone to a digital processor like the ESP32 which features an I2S interface. You wouldn't need an ADC or other type of codec, just get the digital data which you can then process as is. Now the actual part number for this microphone is INMP441. This is manufactured by TDK and if you go to their website you will notice uh, the part is marked as obsolete. It's not recommended for new designs but since there is a bunch of these available for cheap on AliExpress I don't think that's a good reason to not use it for hobby projects. So you'll find the link to this in the description below. There are easy to use libraries for Arduino that will help you plot amplitude or even do an FFT on the signal coming from such a mic. And the last item in today's video is this set of very tiny pogo pins. These are just 3 millimeters in height and I'm keeping them in the bag in order not to lose them. I really need to uh, put on a macro lens so I can show you a close up of these. Uh, but I plan to experiment with some DIY spring clamps for fast programming of boards. I figured these low profile spring connections would work well but we'll see after I build the first prototype. I'll have to do a separate video on that subject. They are fairly inexpensive and literally available in any shape and size so if you discover you need something a little thicker or thinner or longer you can always find something close if not the exact size you need. As always a link will be provided in the description below the video. That was all for today I hope this was interesting to watch and you found something useful to order in this video. May this be the first of a long series of interesting mailbag videos that I will publish in 2021. Don't forget you can support the channel on Patreon with as little as $1 per month. You can check out my other mailbag videos in this playlist. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.